Look at that. This is a hurricane, and depending on where you live in the world, it can be called a few other things, such as a typhoon. These storms are quite scary. If one is coming to you, it's probably best to run. But what exactly are hurricanes, or typhoons, or whatever? To find out, let's look at a hurricane. Hurricane Igor of 2010. This storm eventually hit Canada, but by the time it got to Canada, it had turned into a mid-latitude cyclone, which is a story for another time. Anyway, here you can clearly see thunderstorms arranged in spiral rain bands around the system. By the way, when I say thunderstorms, I mean thunderstorm clouds. You'd be really unlucky to find lightning in a hurricane, but it does happen. Inside these rain bands, you'll find very strong winds and very heavy rain. As you head towards the centre of the storm, you'll find that the wind especially gets a lot faster, until you reach the eye wall. The eye wall is a ring of thunderstorms around the eye. In the eye wall, the winds can top 200 miles per hour. This is where the weather is at its absolute worst. Inside the eye wall is a calm area of weather known as the eye. As I said, the weather is actually quite nice. But before you rush out to sunbathe, be warned, sunbathing in the eye is not a clever idea. Because staring you right in the face is the other side of the eye wall. And if you find yourself sunbathing when the eye wall comes, you'll quickly realise this is a very not clever idea. But you probably already knew this. You probably also know that hurricanes get their power from the sea. Warm seawaters give the storm all their energy and power. And you may also know that the temperature required is 26.5 degrees Celsius, or 80 degrees Fahrenheit for all you Americans out there. So, does warm water equal hurricane? No. Why isn't this the case? Well, let's look at the tracks of all known tropical cyclones. You see, there's a massive gap around the equator where the water is warm enough for these systems. So why aren't there any storms around here? Mostly. Well, we need to talk about the storm's rotation. Without rotation, the low pressure area cannot develop very far as it all collapses into the center. So where do these storms get their rotation from? The Earth. The Earth's spin gives the hurricanes their spin. These storms spin anti-clockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere, as with all low pressure systems. This is called the Coriolis effect. So, back to the equator. Around the equator, the Coriolis effect isn't particularly strong at all. So storms take their time deciding which way to spin, and by the time they've decided which way to spin, they're usually dead. This is why you won't find storms near the equator. So, warm waters plus the Coriolis effect equals hurricanes. No. So what's missing now? Well, to find out, we need to look at the thing that mainly stops hurricanes from forming in the first place. Wind shear. Now let's say this is the side of a hurricane. Hurricanes don't look like this from the side, but let's just say it is. And these arrows represent wind. If the wind is the same on the ground as it is 50,000 feet in the air, it's no problem, but it usually isn't. This difference in wind is called wind shear. If the difference is not very much, it really doesn't matter, but if the difference is significant, it can literally tear the storm apart. Here is a young storm undergoing incredible wind shear. You can see the low level circulation is clearly separated from all the thunderstorm activity. Needless to say, this storm didn't last very long, and this is why you won't find very many storms here in the southeastern Pacific, or here in the South Atlantic, mostly. So, a storm needs warm waters, the Coriolis effect, and low wind shear, right? No, there are still missing ingredients. If we just had these three elements, nothing much would happen. You might get the odd cloud or thunderstorm, but not a hurricane. We need something to kickstart the whole process, an atmospheric disturbance. 
from space in atmospheric disturbance looks like several thunderstorms around the low pressure center. While these atmospheric disturbances kickstart the whole process, it still needs something else. The air around it needs to be humid. Dry air can dry up the entire system. The air can be dry for various reasons, from high pressures to desert dust. To see this, let's look at the water vapor imagery of Hurricane Katrina. At this point, the storm looks extremely organized. And it is. It's a Category 5 hurricane. But let's fast forward to the next day. You can see the western side of the storm doesn't look particularly healthy. Dry air has been intruded into the storm and is literally choking it. This caused Katrina the winds to drop by 50 miles per hour before landfall. Unfortunately that wasn't enough but it's still that significant weakening. So, to summarise, an atmospheric disturbance with warm waters, little wind shear, the Coriolis effect, Humidity equals hurricane, right? Yes, finally, you've got it! Except, do you see how some of these have asterisks against them? This means these aren't straightforward rules. What, do you like having straightforward rules? Well, they aren't. Get used to it. Nature doesn't like making straightforward rules. A good example would be Hurricane Exelon which managed to survive and even strengthened in sea surface temperatures as low as 21 degrees Celsius, which frustrated forecasters. Another good example is Hurricane Wilma. After it became the strongest storm in Atlantic history and replaced its tiny eye with a much bigger one, it hit Mexico. When it came out of Mexico, it was a 100 mile per hour Category 2 hurricane. They expected it to weaken to a Category 1, as it was in an area of extremely high wind shear. But it did the exact opposite, strengthening into a strong Category 3 hurricane, catching Floridians by surprise. And this is where I'm going to end my video. You see, I could talk about the impact all the time, I'm pretty sure we all could, but that seems awfully depressing, and these storms are fascinating, so long as they stay out sea which some of them do, but some of them don't. Thanks for watching. This has been my first video, and trust me when I say this, it won't be my last. Many more have been planned. So, if like me, you're interested in weather videos, then please hit the subscribe button. I'm also going to be doing some videos on aviation, so if you're interested in that stuff, hit the subscribe button, as these will be coming very soon.